Hi, welcome to the first recap video of our MOOC on micronutrients and undernutrition. I'm really happy that so many of you have already signed up for this course. And I'm also very pleased that many of you have already followed our first MOOC on macronutrients and overnutrition. Now, there's been a lot of activity on the discussion forum, and many people have raised questions. And there are a few that I would like to address in a little bit more detail. And there's one concept in particular that I would like to explain in more detail, and that is the concept of bioavailability. And that re uh, relates to a number of issues that were raised, and that's why I think it's worthwhile to, uh, to look at it in more detail. Now, what is bioavailability? Bioavailability refers to the relative uh, proportion of a vitamin or mineral that is taken up into the body, that is absorbed. And that really depends on the context, the food context, the matrix. Uh, so in certain foods, the vitamin or the mineral is bound to other components that prevent it from being absorbed, causing it to have low bioavailability. Yeah? And that also brings in the discussion of synthetic versus natural vitamin, because it's sometimes believed that vitamins in their naturally, natural form are better, and vitamins provided in a pill are somehow inferior. Now, in fact, it, it's more like the opposite, because when you provide vitamins in synthetic form, such as folic acid in a pill, almost all of it is absorbed. It has a high bioavailability. Whereas if you provide the folate in the form of a food, uh, quite a bit less is absorbed. Uh, so it has lower bioavailability. And the same is true for vitamin A in the form of beta carotene. Beta carotene is actually uh, much better absorbed when you provide it in pill form than as parts of fruits and vegetables. And this very important discovery was made uh, more than 20 years ago by researchers at our department here in Wageningen, uh, particularly Dr. Clive West, who found out through his studies in Indonesia that uh, it was very hard to meet the requirement uh, to overcome a deficiency of vitamin A by providing children with fruits and vegetables. Because the vitamin A, the beta carotene, in these fruits and vegetables was actually very poorly absorbed. Yeah? And that led to the realization that it's, it's very hard to meet the recommended intake of vitamin A through fruits and vegetables. Yeah? And that led to a reassessment of the policies that are necessary for these indiv individuals in low-income inc countries to meet the requirement for vitamin A. Yeah? So that's what I'm, I want to mention about bioavailability. Uh, there's more about it in the course but I felt it's an important concept that uh, deserves an ex extra explanation here. Now, the second issue I want to address is cup size. You may wonder, cup size? Well, yeah, cup size. So you may have noticed that uh, the MOOC is filled with uh, food composition tables containing information on the nutrient composition of foods. And the first week, this was about vitamins. Uh, it provides information on the vitamin C content of strawberries, pineapple, or oranges, etc. Now, you have, may have noticed that we've expressed the amount of this nutrient per serving of, of food, per unit of consumption. And people have wondered why we did that and why we didn't express it per 100 grams. Now, that's often done. Also, in the Netherlands, food composition tables usually express the amount of nutrient per 100 grams. But the reason why we didn't do that is because we wanted to uh, make you become aware of the amount of a particular nutrient in one unit of consumption. And let me take uh, the example of parsley. You may know that parsley is full of vitamin C. It contains a ton. Huh? But I'm not eating 100 grams of parsley. So huh? per 100 grams, it contains a lot. But per unit of consumption, it contains very little and contributes very little to our daily vitamin C intake. Yeah? So that's why we decided to express it per serving. And these servings can vary in size from uh, one teaspoon to an ounce to uh, a cup. And then you're wondering, well, uh, a cup, uh, this is a cup, but this is also a cup. So what is really a cup? Well, in measuring terms, a cup is about 240 milliliters. So that's about the volume of this cup. Uh, uh, the other cup, this one is about half. So we would say this is half a cup. This is also half a cup. The big one here is one cup, and this is about three uh, quarters of a cup. So yeah, that's why we uh, decided to express it uh, per serving. So hey, wasn't that under the other one? Hmm. Anyway, 
Uh, so that's what I wanted to share with you uh, this week. I hope to see you again uh, next week at the end of uh, week two, where you'll learn more about the water-soluble vitamins, and we'll, uh, we'll discuss some questions again at the end of next week. See you then.